Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. My name's Amanda, and tonight we're gonna be making a chicken pot pie from scratch. So I just made the chicken, uh, I mean the pie dough, and so I will link that video up ahead. Um, and now we're going to make the inside of the chicken pot pie. So let's get cooking. All right, we're gonna try a different angle. I normally have my camera on that side, but I figured I would try something different. Although I feel like my hair is gonna be more in the way this way. I'm not sure why, but we'll see. Now that I've gotten used to talking to my left, I gotta change it up a bit, but we never wanna do anything to get ourselves stagnant, right? All right, so I'm gonna get my skillet waiting for me. So I'm just gonna put it on a medium right now, just get it kind of preheated a little bit. And we're gonna start with a chunk of butter, and oh, don't you worry, we'll be adding more. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start with half an onion. <clears throat> if you were making like a giant chicken pot pie, you could probably use a full onion or if your onion was a lot smaller, but this is a pretty hefty guy. So this is a sweet onion. I like cooking with sweet onions, um, but a white onion would be perfectly fine. So um, my kids actually don't like chicken pot pie. So when they heard I was making this for dinner, I got kind of complaints and grumbles. Um, they just don't know how lucky they are. But, I, okay, to be honest though, when I was a kid, I didn't like chicken pot pie either. I was one of those kids that liked all my, you know, components to be separate on the plate and casseroles were just not my thing. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there's the people out there who know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, though, you'd be fine, you'd be hard pressed to find a dinner I wouldn't like. I love trying new foods and um, different. I used to not like bitter things very much, but even now I'm starting to like bitter more than I used to. I, and sour too. Okay, so I'm just dicing this up fairly small. So we can get it going. My butter is starting to melt. You can kind of give it another little rough chop after you've got it into dices because, you know, we're not worried about it looking pretty or anything like that. You just want to think about the size of the onion on your fork. Like, if you're eating a bite, do you want that much to be onion when you're, you know, taking a bite of your pot pie? Probably not, so we're going to cut it a little bit smaller than that. Hey, and I'm not crying, so we're... we're we're doing good here. Some onions just make my tears run like crazy. White onions, that's another reason why I think I like sweet onions more because white onions tend to make my eyes cry way more than sweet onions. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. I want enough fat in my skillet because <clears throat> after we cook the vegetables down, we'll be making a kind of like a gravy sort of sauce um so i tonight i'm going to be using leftover roast chicken and i'll talk about that a little bit more in detail when we get to the chicken but i made a roast chicken you can see the recipe up there and um so i'm using the leftover meat to make this pot pie i wish i had saved my gravy if i had saved my gravy i could just have added it to this and it would have made the dish cook a little faster. And plus that gravy was really good. Um, I've got a recipe for that too. Um, hopefully I remember to add all these recipe cards <laughs> when I'm doing my editing. Um, anyway, but, if you, so if you do have leftover gravy, it, this just is a really great leftover type meal. All right, um, let's go carrot next. So when you're adding in your vegetables, things that are gonna take a little bit longer to cook, you're going to want to put in early so they have time to soften up. So, you know, I probably should have done carrot, onion, celery, but I'm gonna just cut my onion into, I mean my carrot up into smaller pieces so it'll cook at the same time as my onion and my celery here. 
Now, another thing we want to think about is the color of our vegetables. We don't want them to be caramelized, so I'm gonna keep my skillet at a low enough temperature that we get uh, them to get translucent and soft. I don't think you can see into my skillet as well. Oops, from this side. I'll show you what I've got going in a minute. Um, so, here we go, dicing it up. Doesn't have to be perfect again. Just any sort of which way and get it in the skillet. It's really nice to cook and chop at the same time because then dinner can go a lot faster. So, like I said, I just made the pie dough and my method, I mean, if I wasn't filming, it would have taken me less than 10 minutes. Um, it's very fast if you have a food processor, but if you, so if you're just nervous about doing a pie dough, definitely check out my video. But if uh, you're just trying to save a little time, using a pre-bought pie dough would be perfectly acceptable too. Okay. So I want, oh yes. And I had already started my oven, so it's waiting on me. So I've got it at 375 and I'm not, I don't need it yet, but it can just chill and hang out. So now that I've finished chopping my vegetables and I'm actively watching my pot a little bit closer, I turned up the heat because I want it to cook faster, but I still don't want it to brown. So I'm watching it. So if it starts to get too hot, I can immediately lower the heat down again. Um, that's the difference between a gas and a glass top stove too. So if you're cooking on a glass top stove and you lower the heat, your pan isn't gonna cool down as fast because the um, surface temperature of your stove is gonna stay hot. So if you need to cool your pan down faster, you're gonna have to take it off the heat. But when you're cooking on a gas top stove, if you turn down your heat, then um, it'll immediately start, you know, cooling down your pan too. All right, so time for some seasoning. So I like to do salt and pepper, pretty gener generous amount of pepper. Um, and a lot of times when I cook chicken, I like to use thyme. I think chicken and thyme go really well together. Squeeze, oh man, it smells so good. Okay, so squeeze your herbs, your dried herbs, so that way you can release their oils and if you have fresh thyme totally use it okay so even though i put garlic in here i'm going to put some garlic powder and some onion powder just a little bit i feel like it gets into the sauce more that way and gives the sauce some more flavor so doubling up your spices in different ways Okay, so this is turmeric powder. It's gonna actually turn our chicken pot pie a funny color at the end, but I, it's my secret ingredient when I make chicken pot pie and everybody loves my chicken pot pie. And they're like, what is that? And it's just a tiny little bit of turmeric makes a really big difference. And turmeric is like amazing for your health and your joints. Now that much isn't gonna do anything for you. you like, I actually take a turmeric supplement every night. Um, not a health coach, not a doctor, look into it. But if you suffer from inflammation, then that is something you might wanna consider. And you know what I forgot to do? Oh my gosh, okay. I forgot to put my potato in. So normally your potato, I was telling you about the, um, <clears throat> the order of putting in your vegetables. Uh, a potato would be something you would probably want to put in first because potatoes take a little bit longer to cook. But, you know, we're really cooking here and mistakes happen in the kitchen. So, if this happens to you, you just don't worry. You think about the size of your vegetable. So, I'm going to make my potato pretty small because I don't want to leave him out. Also, speaking of inflammation, <laughs> I have a nightshade allergy Nightshade allergy is um, potatoes, peppers, um, and tomatoes are all part of the nightshade family. And they give me inflammation. But I'm finding that taking the turmeric supplement along with some other things 
is helping me manage it and I can eat some as long as I just pay attention and don't have a nightshade with every meal every night of the week. So, okay. Again, I walked away, so my stuff is getting kind of hot, starting to stick, so I'm gonna stir it up here again. Nothing's getting too brown, we're doing good. Get this potato in quickly, and I'm, I'm cutting it a little bit smaller than I normally would. And I think I'm actually just gonna use half of my potato. So, that looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to work on the sauce. So, that's when I said, don't worry, we'll be using more butter because in order to make a sauce, like a type of gravy um, or roux based sauce, you need fat and flour. So there's already some glistening of fat, but I just want a little bit more. I'm gonna let this melt, and then I'm going to sprinkle some flour on top. Here, let me give you a close-up of what we got going on right now. So, as you can see, there's some glistening of the fat on my vegetables. And you can see it kind of, there's the butter, it's kind of pooling up, that's kind of what you want. You don't want too much, but you do need enough to coat your flour. Um, is you're gonna have lumps. Okay, so let me grab my flour. <laughs> and I'm so glad, the other thing I did with my roast chicken the other day was make some chicken stock because we are snowed in and um, I haven't been able to get to the grocery store and I used up the last of my uh, box chicken stock the other day. So I made some homemade chicken stock in the Instapot yesterday because I just had this feeling, because I always need chicken stock on hand. Hopefully we'll be able to get out to the grocery store tomorrow. So I'm just putting a couple of tablespoons of flour into um, this skillet. And now I'm gonna get it nice and coated. You don't wanna see any of the white anymore. Now, since I only had one roast chicken and it was actually a pretty small chicken, I only got, I got a quart plus a little bit of chicken stock. So it's my precious. And it came out really good because homemade chicken stock should gel up. And this is kind of, it's got that light kind of jelly texture. Okay. Oh, watch. See? Oh, this is really good chicken stock. Okay, that is so good. Talking about inflammation, I had no idea this was gonna be a health, uh, health show today, but <laughs> um, I've learned a lot about joint pain over the years. Uh, the last two years I suffered, um, or before, I had really, really bad joint pain, and I started doing yoga. I've lost 66 pounds, and I... Um, tried to like up my nutrition and stuff. And homemade stock, when it's gelatin like this, amazing for your joints. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. This is actually making me wanna make stock again. I used to make it all the time. And then I just got, kinda got lazy because the stocks in the stores started getting to be a little bit healthier. But, um, you know, without processed ingredients and things like that. <clears throat> so I haven't been making it from scratch anymore. All right, oh, look at this. All right, so we're gonna add just a touch of milk and I'm gonna grab my shredded chicken. Hey guys. Okay, so last night I made the chicken pot pie with what I thought was my roast chicken, but I just kind of like had a moment and I had two bags of chicken next to each other in the fridge. This is the roast chicken that I thought I was going to put in my chicken pot pie. Then I also had a bag of shredded chicken left over from a previous meal a couple nights before and they were sitting next to each other in the fridge and my brain did that thing where I grabbed the bag thinking it was roast chicken and I just cooked with it and it was pretty funny because in the back of my mind when I was filming last night 
I would look at that chicken and I was like, something's weird, but it never percolated to the actual top of my brain until we were sitting down to dinner and I took a bite of the chicken and I was like, this is the shredded chicken. I kept calling it the roast chicken. So um, tonight I'm actually making the roast chicken into barbecue chicken wraps. I'm not filming it, it's not gonna be a video. Um, but I did wanna pop on and tell y'all that I am crazy, but not that crazy. And so if, when you're watching my, and I'm not sure where I'm gonna insert this clip, but when you're watching and you look at that chicken and you go, it looks like shredded chicken. It was. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, so as you can see, I really don't have that much chicken, but that's okay. We're gonna add a splash of milk. Um, I like to use whole milk. I actually drink raw milk, but when I cook, I use um, pasteurized because milk up here in Washington is extra, raw milk is very expensive. And so if I'm gonna cook it, I don't really want to um, use my raw milk. Okay, so now we want this to thicken. And here are some things I'm gonna tell you about the chicken. Okay, so this was leftover chicken from, like I said, a roast that I made two nights ago. If you don't have this, you can buy pre-cooked, you know, chunked up chicken. Um, you could use raw chicken, and what you're gonna do at this stage is you would cut your raw chicken into small bite-sized pieces, and then you would put it in your um, dish right now at this stage, cover it, and let it simmer for about 15 minutes until your chicken cooks through. Um, this is just being able to use some leftover chicken is just a shortcut. But you don't want to bring your chicken up to a boil because it will toughen the meat up. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a chance to thicken. And if it doesn't want to thicken, because again, I don't really cook with measurements, so sometimes you mess up. And so if that's what happens, what you would do is you would get a clean bowl, you would add cold chicken stock or cold water and flour and whisk it together to make a slurry and add the slurry to this broth. Never put um, flour into a hot liquid, it will bubble up, I mean, gum up. It'll turn into like little bubbles, like chewy not pleasant flavored things. This is kind of thickening up, but I, you know what? I actually do want it to be a little thicker. So we're gonna do that slurry method that I was just telling you about. So I'm gonna get a little bowl and my little baby whisk. Let's see, I don't know. Sometimes you just gotta give it time. No, I want it a little thicker than that. Okay, so I'm gonna use water just because my chicken stock is so thick, it wouldn't be easy to whisk. You could also use a little bit of extra milk too. Just basically you want a cold liquid. And so I've got um, just flour and cold water. Whisk it till there's no lumps and then pour it in. And then that way your um, sauce here can thicken up and you won't get lumps. That was the word. I was saying bumps, but lumps. Okay. Now it's getting thicker and it'll continue to thicken up a little bit more. I'm going to lower it because again, I don't want to boil my chicken. Even that it's, you know, it's already cooked at this point. Really all I'm doing is thickening up the sauce a little bit more, making sure those potatoes had time to cook all the way through. Let's see, a dish like this is so good on the budget because it doesn't take that much chicken. I mean, and the rest of the ingredients are all very cheap. All right, so at this point, we're just gonna taste it and it'll be ready to go into our pie filling. Okay, I'm actually gonna grab a potato to make sure my potatoes cooked through, which I think they had time to. Um, I'm thinking about the seasonings. It's really good. Feels like it's missing 
something, just thinking for a minute. Maybe a little, little extra salt. Trying to decide if I want to add anything else. I don't think so. I think I just need a little extra salt. Maybe a little bit of splash of milk. If you want to be a little bit more decadent, add some cream. But see, the uh, turmeric turned it a golden color. So if you did not have that, and the potatoes can be slightly under because we are gonna put this in the oven for like 30 minutes. So. Mm. Yeah, that's all it needed was extra, just a little extra salt. It is good to go, it's so good. I'm gonna roll out my pie dough and show you how to assemble and put it in the oven. So let me grab my dough out of the refrigerator and I'll be right back. Hey, so I'm back um, along with my pug and my kitty cat magic, Pug Watson. Anyway, if you watched my pie dough uh, video, which I will link down in the description box, the rest of this video is the same as the end of that video. If you have not watched the pie dough recipe. The rest of this video is me rolling out the dough and filling it with the chicken pot pie filling and showing you how it looks when it's all done. Um, if you, you know, use your own pie dough from like a frozen one or something like that, then, you know, follow the instructions on that pie dough for cooking your chicken pot pie. I want to say thank you to anybody who is watching and I really appreciate it. And if this is where you check out, I will see you next time. And otherwise continue watching if you'd like to see how to roll out pie dough and add your filling. Bye. All right guys, so I have got my pie dough here. I've got a pie dish and now I'm going to butter it. <laughs> this is just a Ziploc bag that I was using for something else. And now I'm just gonna use it, or you can just use the butter on your hands. And I'm going to smear butter. If you had the, the paper that the butter still came in, even better, but I didn't. So just using my um, Ziploc bag there. Okay, which is silly because I'm still gonna get my hands dirty or buttery, I guess. All right, because I want to make sure that my butter gets into my pie dish very evenly <clears throat> so that we don't have our pie crust stick and ruin the entire effect. Make sure you get it down here in the, the edge. All right, let me wash this off and we'll roll out our pie dough. So my pie dough has been sitting in the fridge for probably about 15 minutes while I assembled a chicken pot pie behind me. But again, this dough would be great for a sweet or a savory application. So this is a double crust and I'm going to cut it in kind of half with a little bit more for the top. No, a little bit more for the bottom than the top because the bottom has to go up the edges too. All right, I'm gonna form it into a ball. Get that out of the way. Oh man, it's smelling so good. And um, we've been snowed in for like what? Today's Monday, is it Thursday, Friday, so it's day five that we've been snowed in. Okay, so again, we don't wanna need this very much, but I wanna kind of keep my edges um, smooth that helps as you roll it out that your dough won't crack if you kind of keep the edges smooth. If you see them to start to crack, like right here, it's kind of cracking. Take your fingers and kind of like Play-Doh and just mush it back together. Now, <laughs> one thing is I am not a pie, like, okay, flavor, I'm a pie dough master. I think I make some of the best pie dough and I know that sounds, conceited or whatever, I don't know. But I love my own pie dough. I'm not very good at making it pretty and artistic. So 
Unfortunately, you won't learn that lesson from me, but if you want tasty pie dough, which, you know, to be fair, I think is part, probably more important than if it looks beautiful, although, you know, good looking food is important. Uh, they say we eat with our eyes first. I follow um, an amazing blind YouTuber named Molly Burke, and she was talking one day about how, you know, not being able to see your food kind of really affects sometimes. And I never really thought about that. <clears throat> okay, so I wanna make it, you know, bigger than my, oh, and here's a trick. So if you take your um, rolling pin, you can roll up your dough and then you can lay it on top and unroll it. Nifty, right? Okay, so I'm gonna, it's very stretchy and pliable. So you wanna kind of get it in there. Now, while I roll out the other half, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator because what did I say? We wanna keep our dough cold. Until it gets right up to that point where we stick it in the oven. I mean, I've even been, I've even put it in the freezer before. Just, you don't want to like actually freeze it, but just to give it that extra shock of cold right before you put it in the oven. What that does is um, all that butter that we put into the dough, um, if it stays hard and cold, and then you shock it in, the, uh, in a hot oven, it will steam and create little air pockets. And that's where you have nice flaky layers in your dough. So if your um, butter is melted and it's not like hard, when you put it in the oven, it's just going to uh, make the dough soggy. It's not gonna steam, it will make it soggy. So, that is why keeping your dough very cold is so important. Okay, now this one, we want to just be slightly bigger than our uh, crust. Okay, I'm gonna get the crust out. And see, since that was so fast, I probably would've put it in the freezer normally. I just, my freezer's kind of full. All right, again, I'm gonna use chicken pot pie, but this is where these two kind of merge together. I don't know if I should use the same footage. I'm not sure how to do this part <laughs> as a YouTuber. All right, I'm going to put my stuffing in here. Ooh. And let's see if we can do something pretty. I don't know gonna lay this on top and I don't know crimp the edges somehow <laughs> this is the part I've never really paid that much attention to hey this isn't looking too bad not too shabby and then I think like I've seen people kind of pinch it I'm not a baker, so I like doing dough. Like, I like doing pie dough and pizza dough and bread doughs. So I do like doing dough, but like cakes and cookies and things like that, um, I'm not really interested in. All right, I'm gonna do my little vent holes. I could have cut out like other pretty shapes before I laid it on top, but that lets the steam of the filling out. And we're going to do a quick egg wash. All right. Now, my dog's gonna get really excited because anytime I pull out an egg, he thinks it's for him. But it's not. I love these little um, corningware, no, not corningware, um, Corel, Corel dishes. All right. <laughs> And then these little baby forks I got from Ikea. <laughs> I don't know, I always find uses for them. They're perfect for whisking a single egg or 
They are great for pulling an olive out of the jar or, you know, certain hors d'oeuvres. Okay, so this we're going to brown. We're gonna put this on the top of our pie dough, whether you're doing a savory or a sweet one. And um, it will give your crust that nice golden flavor. Or not flavor, that look. I need to pay attention to my words. <laughs> Yay. All right, so now we're gonna bake it. I've got it at 375. I'm gonna check on it in half an hour and see what it looks like. Uh, because this is a savory pie, see, aha. I've got these, um, it's like a big salt crystals. I forgot what they're called. My brain is not wanting to cooperate with me tonight. Anyway, I'm gonna sprinkle a couple of these big salt, sea salt, crystals on top of my pie. All right. So I'm gonna pop this guy in the oven for like half an hour, check on just really, we're waiting until the pie dough cooks through because the filling's already cooked. And I'll show you the finished thing. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I know that you have so many things that you could be doing and I'm glad that you came to my kitchen, spent some time with me tonight. Really appreciate it. And I also really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button. That lets me know that you are enjoying my content and it will let you know when I upload more videos. Y'all have a good night and I will see you next time.